This is Professor Pelton. This is Chapter 7, Section 2. This is Part 1 of uh, trigonometry. So trigonometry is used when you uh, combine angles and side lengths. If you just have side lengths or if you just have angles, you don't need trigonometry. But when you mix the two, you need trigonometry. So we're going to do right triangle trigonometry this week and then non-right triangle uh, trigonometry uh, next week. Uh, so keep in mind first with angles, the angles can be positive or negative. So an angle in the uh, clockwise direction is negative, and an angle in counterclockwise direction is positive. Okay, and they start along the positive x-axis, is where the zero is, <clears throat> which is the starting point for angles essentially when you draw them when you relatively speak of them. And angles can be given in degrees or radians. Uh, so degrees are 0 to 360, and then 0 to 2 pi if you go all the way around. So 360 degrees, which is 2 pi radians. So keep in mind the degree measure is a made up measure, because who's to say is 360 ticks all the way around. So, so when they originally um, decided on degrees, they thought that the the year was 360 days, because that's how long it took the sun to get around, but they actually miscounted. It's actually 365, obviously. So the 360 it could have been any number, really. So that's an arbitrary measure with radians. If you look up what radian measure is, it's an actual true measure comparing uh, the arc length and the radius. So that's a valid measure. So if you use a calculator, the calculator is actually converting degrees into radians anytime you use a uh, calculator. And all formulas use radians. They do not use degrees. Okay. Okay. So trigonometry is the measure of triangles. Okay. So what you might want to do is review the unit circle or keep one handy that you can get off Google if need be to get the relative angle to the coordinate it corresponds to. So each, uh, let, me, let me put the pen on here each angle in standard position, which can be in degrees or radians, corresponds to an to a uh, point on the circle, which gives you the cosine and the sine value. Okay. All right. So there are six trigonometric uh, functions from high school, you probably remember, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent, and these are the abbreviations. Okay. So we're going to define them based on uh, right triangles. So every right triangle has three angles. So whatever angle you pick, so if I pick this angle here, that's going to have an opposite side, right? And it's going to have two adjacent sides. However, one of those adjacent sides is specifically called the hypotenuse, which is the right angle uh, side, essentially. So if I pick a different angle, right? So if I draw another triangle over here, and I choose this is my angle theta, right? Now that is the opposite side, right? And I have two adjacent sides. But the other adjacent sides across the right angle is the hypotenuse. Okay, so everything is relative to the angle you're uh, in perspective with. So the six trig functions are defined as follows, right? So for example, the sine function is the, is the opposite side to the hypotenuse. That's a ratio of those two sides relative to whatever angle that you're doing, which we're going to call theta. Any Greek letter will do alpha, beta, or theta is fine. They always use Greek letters for the um, <clears throat> angles. So the way to remember all of these formulas, um, there's a variety of different ways. Either you can use the acronym, which is SOKOTOA, right? Sine is opposite hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent, hypotenuse tangent is opposite over adjacent, or the mnemonic, some old hogs came around here and took our apples. So either way. So determine the six trig functions for the angles alpha and beta. So if I align them up here, oh boy, sine of alpha, cosine of alpha and tangent of alpha. Okay, so if I look at alpha, the opposite side is four and the adjacent side is three and the hypotenuse is five. So opposite over hypotenuse is four or five. 
adjacent over hypotenuse is three over five. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so if I'm going to do cosecant, secant, and cotangent, okay, and the way you remember it is S goes with C, C goes with S, right? Sine goes with C, cosecant, cosine goes with secant, and obviously tan goes with cotan. So if you look at the mnemonic for um, <clears throat> cosecant, that's hypotenuse over opposite, right? And then hypotenuse over adjacent, and then adjacent over opposite, right? You notice the, re the reciprocal is the original six, uh, three functions. All right, so if I do beta, let's do a different color here. Let's erase this. And we'll do a different color. How about red? So now that is the opposite. That is the adjacent. And that is also the adjacent, but it's the hypotenuse, right? So we have sine of beta, cosine of beta, tangent of beta. So the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent to angle B. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> excuse me, that means the cosecant of beta, secant of beta and the cotangent of beta are the reciprocals of each of those. So five thirds, uh, five fourths, and four thirds. Okay, so that's how they're defined, and we can use them obviously coming up in a couple pages here. So depending on what pieces of the triangle you're looking for, use the corresponding trig function of the six. So it doesn't matter how big the triangle gets because if it's the same angle, so we'll assume that alpha is the same angle measure for each of these three triangles that I scaled up. So therefore, if I do the tangent here, this is the tangent of alpha equals um, 1.5 over one because it's opposite over adjacent. Here, the tangent of alpha is what? Three over two. Here, the tangent of alpha, or I'm sorry, theta, I know why I'm saying that, is 4.5 over 3. And here, the tangent of theta is 6 over 4. And you notice those are all the same ratio. 6 over 4 is 3 over 2. 4.5 over 3 is 3 over 2. 1.5 over 1 is 3 over 2. So really, it's irrelevant how big the triangle gets. They maintain the same ratio of lengths relative to the angle. All right, so determine these six trigonometric functions based on the triangle. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to need the all three sides here. So I'm missing uh, side C, essentially. So if I use the Pythagorean theorem, C squared. Whoops, that was not working. Let's get that to work again. There we go. So C, no, that didn't work. Come on. All right, so C squared. All right, let's uh, recalibrate this maybe. I think that might be the issue. Maybe I'll go back to blue. Okay. So C squared, oh yeah, that was the issue. C squared equals uh, A squared plus B squared, right? So C equals the square root of 25 plus 144, plus or minus, since it was a even, even root. So C equals plus or minus root 169. So C equals plus or minus 13, but this can only be 13 because it can't be a negative length in this case, okay? All right, so the sine, what are we doing, alpha? I'm sorry, theta. Uh, cosine of theta and tangent of theta. So if I do the opposite, that is the opposite over the hypotenuse, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the opposite over the adjacent. So if I do the other ones, cosecant, secant, 
and cotangent. So cosecant is the hypotenuse over opposite, the adjacent over, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, hypotenuse over adjacent. There we go. Wow, what's going on with that? And then lastly, um, opposite, or adjacent over opposite. There we go. Okay. All right, pause the video. Try the student problem for yourself. Okay, so this one we're missing the B value. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. All right, because we're missing the B in this case, Pythagorean theorem. So 9 equals 1 plus B squared. So 8 equals B squared. So the square root of 8 equals B, so plus or minus, which is really 2 root 2, right? Because 8 is 3, 2 is correct. But this can only be really 2 root 2. It can't be a negative value. Okay, so if I do our trig functions, sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta. Okay, so relative to the angle, the opposite is 1. So opposite over hypotenuse. And then I have adjacent over hypotenuse. And then I have opposite over adjacent. Okay. All right, so the other functions, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Okay, so we reciprocate all those, 3 over 1, 3 over 2 root 2, and 2 root 2 over 1. Okay. All right, so we can use this knowledge now to solve... Um, for the uh, missing pieces of a triangle. If, if you just have sides, you just have angles, you don't need to do trig necessarily. Okay, so let's say I have 40 degrees. The other angle must be 60 degrees, right? So if I want to find sides A and B, I can use a variety of trig functions. So for example, I could use sine of 40 degrees, and I that would be opposite over hypotenuse, right? So if I solve by multiplying by 12 on both sides, I get 12 times the sine of 40 degrees equals A, right? Or I could use uh, cosecant, right? Cosecant of 40 degrees right, would be uh, 12 over A. So I'll multiply by A on both sides. So I get A times the cosecant of 40 degrees equals 12. So if I divide by cosecant, I get A equals 12 over the cosecant of 40 degrees. Okay. All right. So A is approximately, let's not give us a nice perfect value. So keep in mind here when you use a calculator that everything is done in radians because, uh, as we discussed, degrees are not really a valid measure. Okay, so I'm going to go to our calculator here. So we can do 12 times the sine of 40, and any calculator will do this. The big thing is, if I'm plugging in 40 degrees, you need to make sure it's in degree mode, not radian mode, okay? Because it doesn't know what this is. This could be 40 cookies. 40 kicks to the head, it could be anything, right? This is 40 degrees, okay? Otherwise, it's 40 radians if it's in radian mode. So what the calculator is going to do, is going to convert the 40 degrees into radians, so it'll actually do it correctly. All right, so then I get that answer there, which is also the same as 12 divided by the cosecant of 40 degrees, right? You get the same answer. So 7.714 is good enough. Okay, so that gives us A. So now we need to get side uh, B, which we can use a variety of things. Uh, I'm going to use cosine. 
So the cosine of 40 degrees um, I do wonder if I just did that right. Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, let's see here, 40 degrees. So we have uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I multiply by 12 on both sides, I get cosine of 40 degrees equals B, or B is approximately 9.19. There we go. Okay, so the big thing is don't use your estimates to, use, to find other estimates. Try to use the values you know that are exact, and don't use, and your ratio only has one um, number that's missing, not two, because we're going to be using an approximation. All right, pause the video, try the student field problem. Okay, so you can draw an, an arbitrary triangle. Right triangle, obviously, in this case. So that one's a right. And that's 65 degrees, right? Which means the other one has to be 25 degrees because it has that add up to 180, right? Because 90 plus 65 plus 25 is 180. So the only rule is the right angle has to be C. Any of the other ones can be B or A. So I'm going to label this one as B and this one is A because it says that B is a 65, right? So this, the right one has to be C. The other two doesn't matter whether they're A or B or not. So this is lowercase a, this is lowercase c, and this is 17 meters because that is the lowercase b, okay? All right, so we can use a variety of trig functions now. How about we use the 25 degrees? So I'll do cosine of 25 degrees. So that is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So if I multiply by C in both sides, I get C times the cosine of 25 degrees equals 17, or C equals 17 over the cosine of 25 degrees. So if I type that in my calculator, make sure it's in degree mode, I will get 18.757 meters. Okay, so if I want to do um, the A, I don't want to use the estimated C I just found, so I'm going to use tangent. So tangent of 25 degrees. I could also use cotangent, that would also work, right? which is opposite over adjacent. Multiply by 17 on both sides, so 17 times the tangent of 25 degrees equals A. So A is approximately uh, 7.93 meters. And if you did the cotangent, you just have to do the 17 over A instead of A over 17. Either way, it would work, right? All right, that is the end of part one.